Ladies, I'm Kay Wheatley, and I've been working with this group for about 13 years, I think. But I want to begin by just saying welcome and thanks. And I have to be careful because this has been such a long journey, and we're so excited that I'm afraid I'm going to start crying. So if I do, please excuse me. But I just want to give um, some special recognition. First, I'm going to start off by telling a short story about knowledge, and that's your community's knowledge of how important a library is to the community and how libraries serve everybody in the community. There is no um, breakdown, whether you're young, old, no matter what color, no matter what income, no matter employed or not employed or whatever, there, the library is there to serve you. If you want to come in and meet, if you want to have a seat and just read a book, if you want to just gather and talk with a friend, that's what this new library will do. The other thing that this group has shown is perseverance. Well, I said I've been around for 13 years. This project has been going on for about 15, to my knowledge, 15 years. And the third thing in my story that's important is the reason all of this is happening, <clears throat> this is where I have to be careful, is because the love of this community for the community. And one of the best ways that they feel they can serve the community is to give you a new library. So we're going from about 2,500 square feet to about just over 22,000 square feet, okay? Now, I don't have all the names of the people that were ahead of before I joined, but there was a group that picked up the ball and just started running with it. Now, a couple of the people that I did work with, I want to mention. Mary Turner, who is no longer with us, but trust me, I am sure she is watching from above and smiling from ear to ear. Um, and just so RYJ knows, she'll be watching through the whole construction process. <laughs> um, she, she was a key leader in keeping this going. Also, where's Lisa Stone Cipher? Lisa. This project has had a lot of, I'll say obstacles come up along the way. And Lisa led this group as president of the Friends through a lot of those obstacles. And you talk about somebody being the right person at the right time, Lisa Stone Cipher qualifies for that. I also, I'm not sure if Jonette Oldham is here. Okay. Jonette, Jonette partnered with Mary and kept things going, and she cannot be thanked enough. And then there's Anne and Jerry Henning, who are here, I know, I already saw them. They also were part of the original board and have kept it going, and when I saw Anne today, she said, I never thought this day would come, I'm so happy. <laughs> so. I ditto her, her comments. Now, <clears throat> there's two other people I want to mention who are still on the board. And you talk about perseverance. That is my friend, Joey M. Mastin. <laughs> she also has led this project for about the same amount of time as me, but has just been a key, key person in making it happen. And then there's Dana Watte. Stand up. Dana has been with this group. I believe he was with the original board. So I'm calling him, I'm not implying he's old, but I am calling him the oldest standing board member. Okay? Dana, thank you for all of your guidance in getting paperwork done, taking care of finances and all of that. It wouldn't happen without you. Okay? So I just wanted to thank everybody for that. I also um, wanted to remind you all, if you are not a current member of the Friends, we want you. <laughs> so please consider joining. There's a table back there with forms. It's not expensive and it's really exciting and you'll meet absolutely wonderful people. 
your friends group, just so you know, to my knowledge, all friends groups play a role in the creation of a new library. To my knowledge, this friends group is the only one that started the library for, from conception, building it, designing it, and taking it all the way through the process till we meet again for the groundbreaking. Like I said, it's because of their perseverance and their love of the community, but any of them that you see, they'll be introduced later, they, they deserve so much thanks, it's not funny. And then, <clears throat> I just want to remind you all that construction will be starting probably in early November and will take about 12 to 14 months. So mark your calendars accordingly because if you think this is a celebration, wait till you see the <laughs> ribbon cutting. And since part of my job is fundraising, I would be remiss <laughs> not, to, not to tell you that we are still raising funds to keep everything going, to buy a bigger collection, to do marketing and fundraising and all that. So any contribution that you can make towards the project is greatly appreciated. There will also probably the beginning of next year, maybe the end of this year, there will be naming opportunities to share with all of you and anybody that would like to take advantage of a naming opportunity. We would be honored for you to be honored or someone you know or to, to memorialize somebody. At that, I'm going to hush up and I'm going to invite Kathy Messer, who is the current president of the board, to come up and she and Joanne are going to be going forward with the rest of the program. Well, we made it. And this is a ceremony of thank yous. And I don't think we can say thank you enough. Uh, the first thank you is for the good Lord for giving us this fabulous day. And I, for him to be with us every step of the way on this journey of over 15 years. I'm a little bit of a Johnny or a, a Janet come lately uh, because I wasn't in, I was working at the opera, on the Opera House board at the time when this all started. But how it has continued has just been one miracle after another. There have been so many obstacles, but we're like the little engine that could. We never gave up. And it's because of you and so many people that have made this possible. Uh, I'd like to say something about the person speaking before me, Kay Wheatley. She is our professional fundraiser and our construction consultant. And uh, RYJ already knows her background and uh, they're watching out. Uh, <laughs> she wears many hats. And uh, this, we just wouldn't be here today if we didn't have Kay. She has guided us along and told us what to do and everything, and uh, I just, if it hadn't been for her guidance and her 1 a.m. phone calls, I just don't know what we would have done. I know, if the phone was ringing, Kenny knew who it was. It is my honor and great pleasure to introduce to you the person responsible for putting much of this happening today, oh, putting us over the finish line. The ARPA funding, which is the American Rescue Plan Act, that I can never remember what it stands for, so I wrote it out. <laughs> but the ARPA funding and the state bond bill, that's what really did it, and it brought us here today. And it's my great honor to introduce to you, and as the students from Smyrna Elementary said, you mean the governor of the whole state? <laughs> and this is our governor, Governor John Carney. Well, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, all of you. It really is a, a fantastic day, beautiful weather day. Uh, several weeks back, we were having a similar uh, ribbon cutting, I guess it was, down in Harrington. And as I was coming up, my wife Tracy was there and she wanted to be here today. Uh, literacy is a big issue of hers and she's worked with Annie and the libraries to just do an amazing job in pr promoting that. 
mostly for, for our children. And it's great to have the Smyrna Elementary uh, students uh, with us today. But as I walked up to us, as I walked up to the tent, Kay, Kay came firing out from somewhere, I don't know where, and threw her arms around me and said, I'm so excited for the, the funding for the Duck uh, Creek Library, something that you all have worked on for a long time. And um, she didn't cry that day, and she almost cried this morning. I'm not gonna cry, I'm gonna keep <laughs> to be happy. But what makes me happy, what warms my heart is to see this community come out today on this event. The ribbon cutting for the uh, expansion of the library is the reason, but obviously all of you have been working for a long time to make it happen. And Kay mentioned many of you who've gone back 10, 15 years to, this, to see this come to fruition. I haven't even been governor for 15 years. <laughs> Uh, but we've had a unique opportunity, and I would be remiss if not recognizing the legislators that are here, Senator Ennis, who was probably here for the full 15 <laughs> years, Senator Hoffner, who's here, who's, who took his place, Representative Carson, who I saw early, Representative Beagleman, where is he? <laughs> and he was a chair or a member of the Joint Finance Committee, so although this is a capital project, a very important influence here representative bush i didn't mention representative cook who's come all the way down from newcastle county from newcastle to be here with us and to our county executive representative for a newcastle county what it says to me in a time where there's so much division across our country is when if you want to get things done come together as a community come together around one goal as all of you have done and you can do great things. I've tried to do that as your governor for now, what is it, six, seven years? It feels like 20 years to me, to be honest, with COVID in the middle. Those COVID years, like they're like dog years, you know, I think seven years for each one. But there's so many people to thank, and you're gonna hear from uh, Andy Norman, Dr. Norman. What we were able to do and you need to thank your congressional delegation for the ARPA funding in the President of the United States. They made almost $8 million available to this project. The state, the legislators I just talked to, made another close to $10 million available for this project, and another million plus were, were raised privately. So that, though, that combination, that partnership, of the federal delegation, the federal dollars, the ARPA money, and our state bond bill money at a time, and it's your money. These are mostly resources that are raised through taxes that people pay. We've had a really strong run of it after the pandemic economically, which has given us the ability to do and complete projects like this. It doesn't happen with, uh, without all of that. And so this is our project. It's your project. It's Smyrna, Greater Smyrna's project, because you are willing to work together around a common vision for something that's gonna be a great thing for this community. One of the largest growing, fastest growing communities in our state. Like you seem to be adding a new school every year, it seems like, <laughs> and expanding and expanding and expanding. And why is that happening? Because it's a great place to live. People wanna live here. And that's what this is all about. That's fundamentally what my job is supposed to be all about, right? Is on your behalf, making our state, making our communities a better place uh, to live and work. I don't do much of any of this stuff other than enable the people who do that work to do it. To work with our legislature, to see the vision that comes out of this community, this community develop the vision for this library and then we follow through and execute, right? And we do measure it off against priorities. One of the people that makes that happen is our director of the state libraries, and she is fantastic. <laughs> Dr. Andy Norman is fantastic. <laughs> because I, I mentioned with the ARPA money, we funded nine libraries, I wanna say, starting with the Selbyville Library. 
She said sure whether I was right or not. She was going to say sure. Uh, and we were doing Harrington when Kay came up to me. And today we're doing uh, Duck Creek and, and several more. And these libraries, one point, one of the things that we learned during the pandemic is in, a, in our isolation, we need community gathering spaces. We need spaces where children can come and, and work and cultivate their love of le reading and, and learning. Places that older folks can come and get training and, and, and work uh, availability uh, information. Places where we can come together and have community meetings. So this is more than just your traditional library. This is really a community center. And a lot of that comes from Dr. Norman and her amazing work with the State Library. So let me just conclude by thanking all of you, really, for what you've done as a community to make this library a reality. And we were able to execute on it with our legislators who I've mentioned. And I hope I didn't forget any, but if I did, I'm in trouble. Representative Spiegelman. Spiegelman. I thought I mentioned him. But anyway, second time, Spiegelman. Thank you very much. Let's cut this ribbon. Dr. Andy Norman. Well, I am so excited to be here because I'm, I'm so excited for you. I know how much this means to the community. So congratulations to Joanne Mastin, to Kathy Messer, and all the friends, to Chris and the library staff, the new board, and congratulations to the greater Smyrna area communities. Thank you to Governor Carney, Secretary Bullock, all the legislators, and the ARPA team as well, all the ARPA guys, for their support for both bond bill funding and the ARPA match to fully fund all of the library construction projects. The local match requirement can cause a delay of a decade or more for library projects, as you've experienced. Thank you for elevating and fast-tracking the libraries for the benefit of Delawareans. So my story with this project is, um, former Friends President Jennifer Merrill contacted me earlier this century about a new <laughs> library for Smyrna. Jennifer was very frustrated with the grassroots process that was involved and asked me to attend a meeting with the UD uh, Institute for Public Administration for assistance. I was doubtful, but when we walked into the room, there was the former Secretary of State, Ed Friel. So where's Ed? There he is, there's Ed Friel right there. And I thought, well, okay then, let's do this. We knew Ed could help us with guidance and the Duck Creek Funding and Governance Report was released in 2013. Still, along, uh, still took a while. Thank you to Kay Wheatley, who has um, already been acknowledged, but she is a real hero for, for libraries. Uh, she was the next right person at the right time who used the UD report and helped the Duck Creek friends to move forward. Kay is helping numerous libraries, <laughs> Duck Creek, Selbyville, Rehoboth, and we asked her, can you please help the Harrington Library too? Um, and so Kay positioned libraries for the ARPA funding and is helping them move forward to meet those deadlines. Kay also positioned libraries with Levy Court. Levy Court just authorized library tax districts for all the public libraries in Kent County. Thank you, Levy Court. So I want to thank all of the public officials at all levels, uh, from Kent and Newcastle County, from the state, all levels, for addressing operating funding. Library operating funding is the hardest, even more so than the construction funding, and it needs to keep pace to maximize <laughs> the benefit of all of these new libraries. Again, congratulations to the friends and library staff and to Smyrna and the surrounding communities. I can't wait to be back here with you for the ribbon cutting. Yay, thank you. At this time, I want to brag about my wonderful friend, Joanne Maston. We have served on so many things together that in a way, when the two of us get together and enter somewhere, they go, uh-oh. <laughs> but I can't say enough about her 
as the Friends president before me and what she has done on Levy Court representing uh, District 1 and uh, how she helped me wrangle the cats. Uh, it, it, was, it was so interesting, but I'll talk about that later. But I can't say enough about Joanne Maston. She is just everything to us in Smyrna. She's our previous mayor. Uh, she excels in every single thing she does. So when I grow up, I want to be just like her. <laughs> Joanne? Contrary to what Ms. Sweetley and uh, Kathy Messer says, you know, it's not one person who pulls the wagon. You have to have a team. And I have really, really been blessed over the 12 years working on this project of having great people to work with, not only on the team, but miscellaneous organizations, which we'll talk about. Um, however, I have the pleasure right now, not only being a board member of the library, but being Kent County Levy Court Commissioner for District 1, which I'm very proud of because it represents a smarter Clayton and surrounding area. But I get to introduce Mr. Ken Decker, who is Kent County's uh, Levy Court Administrator. He came on board with us in March, and so we've invited him today to speak. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Decker. Uh, what Commissioner Maston didn't explain was is that she invited me to do this last night and, <laughs> and I could have declined but I did not want to be the first person ever to say no to Joanne Mast. <laughs> I, I feel a little silly being here because I haven't been in Kent County long and it's like someone who's in the Smyrna Opera House takes a wrong turn and ends up walking onto stage when there's a standing ovation going on. Uh, <laughs> the applause is for, for a lot of people, but certainly not me. One of my favorite moments at Levy Court was the evening where the commissioners adopted the library tax districts. Uh, there wasn't a dry eye in the house, not just for the friends that were there, but for the people who started this journey and who are not with us today. So I would be remiss not to thank Commissioners Pepper, Angel, Maston Hall, Hertz, Sweeney, and am I forgetting one? Scott. Scott. <laughs> that was not accidental, by the way. Commissioner <laughs> Scott owes me a lunch. My, my first meeting at Kent County was at the Camden uh, Library and we were packed in like sardines and at that meeting I met Kay and Kathy and uh, what I learned very quickly is is that there was no way this project was not going to happen so so a word of advice if Kay and Kathy are driving a train don't stand on the tracks <laughs> There is no building more noble of purpose than a library. It contains our accumulation of knowledge, of arts, of science, of literature. It also holds our dreams, our hopes, our fears. It represents the best of who we are, not only as a community, but as a civilization. So I'm here today on behalf of the Levy Court Commissioners to thank you and this community for this incredible building that in a year from today, we'll be celebrating the ribbon cutting on. Thank you, Ken. Uh, with that, I'd like to invite our um, retired senator, Mr. Bruce Sundas, who would like to come up and say a few words. Thank you, Joanne. I just want to uh, mention two items uh, I thought you might be of interest. Uh, number one, uh, in 1984-85, there was a report put out called the uh, 107 South Main Smyrna Public Library, 1984-1985. At that time, um, the president of the Friends was Albert, uh, Alberta Marsh. Oh my goodness. Uh, uh, excuse me, uh, Alberta Marsh. Uh, Alberta, um, <coughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, Alberta Price, I'm sorry. And of course, the, at that time also, they had a commission. The library, uh, Friends of the Library had a commission. And that commission, of course, was Jacqueline Bamberger, you all remember. She was president of the commission. In that report, I'm going to add a couple of highlights. Number one, it talks about the library started as a subscription library, and it says 127 years ago. If you add the uh, extra 39 years on, we're talking about 166 years ago, it started as a subscription library. 
And during the uh, 1940s, the library uh, became a, a free library service for residents of the Smyrna School District. Now, I first got my interaction with the Smyrna Library two years later in uh, uh, 1986. At that time, they had a committee, uh, which was a finance committee for the library. They also had a subcommittee, which Bob Bamberger hosted, and he was chairman of the commit library committee. And they were looking at various proposals for funding and for expansion of the library. One option was to continue as a uh, Smyrna School District Library. Second was become a Kent County District Regional Library. Third option was to be a city library. And the fourth one was become a special state library district. Well, after the group met, it was uh, Senator James Vaughn and Jeff Adams from Levy Court, myself, with the committee. It was decided we would go with a special legislation for a special uh, state library uh, district. And this is a point I want to mention to you. I introduced the bill, House Bill 704, I mean 702, on May 29th, 1986. And it created a special district library, state library. Now, the bill passed the House, which I was a member of the House at the time, but it was also sponsored by Senator Vaughn and Senator uh, Clark. The bill passed the House for flying colors and we went to the Senate. One day I got a call from Senator Vaughn and said, you better get over here, we're having trouble with your bill, getting it passed over in the Senate. I'd like you to make some testimony on it. So I gave testimony on the bill and the bill was voted 10 to 10. So it was a tiebreaker. Um, at that time, Lieutenant Governor was Lieutenant Governor uh, Wu. And of course, we would break the tie, naturally. Well, this being a bill introduced by Democrats and the president of the Senate being lieutenant governor, being Wu, I figured, well, we got the votes already. When they asked him for his vote, he went not voting. So the bill never passed. So then, of course, the Smyrna we got involved in the library, town of Smyrna. Now we're going for a regional library. So I just want to relate that story to you. I was first involved in 1986, and uh, since that time, there's been a lot of work done by the committee, the various committees and the friends, and many of you out in the community. I was helpful in trying, along with other legislators, in making sure that we got the capital funding for this library. And when we found out that several of the legislators had asked for $70,000 on ARCA funds, we also put a letter in. As Representative Carson, I put a letter in asking for ARCA funds for this library. So I just want to just make a few comments and give you that history. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. At this time, I'd like to introduce Dave Carter, uh, Newcastle County Council person, and I'd also like to thank Newcastle County for uh, future financial support for operations of the new li library, which also serves Southern Newcastle County. So Dave, it's all yours. <laughs> Thank you, Joanne. Uh, well, this is an exciting day. Um, if anybody would have told me that the sixth district, who has the two fastest growing areas of the state on this north and south boundary, would be having two libraries within two years, I would have never believed it. Um, I was around 15 years ago when they started. We were asked, we were working with the Apoquitamic Friends Group to come down and talk to folks about what we were trying to do up there and how they were getting started. Um, we didn't know. At that time, most of the, what are now my constituents, I was doing civic work, were so frustrated at the lack of libraries and infrastructures that they were having our legislature put bills in to have Southern Newcastle County succeed and be um, annexed into Kent County, literally. Um, they wanted to be called Apoquitami County at the time. Um, you know, but, you know, I, I could tell you from the experience we've had over the past year up in Apoquitamic, I never thought I would see that intense level of library use. I had my internet go down last week, about two weeks ago, had to go into the library to use it. Every room was full. I literally sat in the hallway to do Zoom calls. Um, 
if you go up there in the evening you will see the young kids are having so much fun you will hear them start kicking and screaming when their parents try and drag them out and and that will happen here too um, it's just really exciting to me the reason Newcastle County is so interested in helping and supporting um, a half to two-thirds of your patrons that come to this library live in southern Newcastle County and I have been internally grateful to Kent County I know Joanne and Alan and I talk about it quite a bit trying to meet services trying to work together as two counties I'm literally on the phone with these guys as much or more than I have with my <laughs> council colleagues from Newcastle County <laughs> trying to figure out fire service paramedics library service um, you know and and I, I can honestly say it's been a huge help to me um, I, I can't say it's as easy in Newcastle County to explain the needs of a rural community as it is to my counterparts in Kent County um, a great help and uh, we are just really um, excited and happy um, we will figure out a way um, we have other libraries that we treat as contract libraries we won't do a tax district but we have Corbett Calloway, City of Delaware City, Newcastle that are not county libraries, they're private libraries that we set up and, with contract libraries and help um, because of the service they provide to our citizens. And um, I can tell you that uh, your committee with Kay and um, Kathy and Joanne and Lisa, um, they literally contacted me a, a month after I had gotten elected. It had me down here <laughs> starting and we haven't stopped since. And uh, I'm really pleased. Um, I know Matt and I had some correspondences last week and uh, once it gets built, um, we are committed and I, I gotta, I ride Matt a lot <laughs> about infrastructure. <laughs> I could be pretty relentless and, um, you know, but I have to say he has been, uh, understanding and it's a, it's a struggle but we are finding the resources and getting it done and with that i think should i maybe, mm -hmm. i'd like to in, um invite matt up here and turn it over to him and and to thank him for all his tolerance and support as we try and meet all these needs good afternoon good afternoon it's a beautiful day here in kent county to borrow from uh commissioner peppers you're either seated right now in the greatest county in America, or you're in the county right next to it. So, <laughs> it's, uh, it's uh, I'll let you decide. Uh, but it, it's an honor to be here uh, with the governor, uh, with Annie Norman. Uh, I know Secretary of State Bullock, uh, who is among our strongest, most ardent supporters of projects like this in the state is here in, in spirit. Uh, my name is Matt Meyer, the County Executive. It's truly an honor uh, to be here. Uh, back in 2017, when I first came into office, I was maybe a, a few days into my new job when uh, Kay Wheatley came knocking at my door. <laughs> and right before I went in to sit down with her, uh, someone on my staff said, J just keep in mind that building's not gonna be in Newcastle County. Uh, and so we sat down and we had uh, a, a challenging discussion where she told me there was an amazing library project here in Smyrna. They were months away from groundbreaking. And <laughs> this, this was my opportunity to, to get in. Um, and it's really because of Kay. I know Joanne subsequently uh, was unrelenting in her follow-up. Um, but uh, it, it's really because of them. They made a tremendous case that, uh, along with Councilman Carter, that when you look at the library district, you know, Kent County set up library tax districts, and uh, there are no walls between counties, and so when you draw those lines for the tax district, just naturally, it likely would in include uh, southern Newcastle County. And so uh, I said okay we're, we're going to be partners in this uh the, the as the governor knows well as the legislators and many of you here know well it's not just funding the building of the building it's funding ongoing maintenance making sure we're taking care of staff and and uh keeping the library well equipped uh and we have committed to being a partner in doing that in newcastle county It's an honor for me, this is actually the, the I was told, Senator Coons, who, who held my job before, told me 
uh, shortly after I was elected. You can start a library project, but you can't finish it. Uh, you, you can only do one or the other. It takes too long. I don't know if, if there's any governor who served 17 years. You say it feels like it, uh, governor. But uh, this is actually the fourth library project I'm gonna be associated with. And I'm, I'm proud of that, including one up in Apo that we did start and did finish. One, one quick story and then I'll, I'll sit back down in my seat that I paid a hefty sum for. <laughs> but um, the, a, a few years ago, uh, James and Deborah Fallows came here. They wrote a book called Our Towns. Uh, and I encourage you to read the book. What they traveled, uh, starting about 10 years ago, 100,000 miles across the country. And they said, in the past 50 years, something has happened in America where there are certain towns and cities that are thriving. And there are certain towns and cities that just aren't making it. Um, and they wanted to understand why. Uh, and if you get the book, just skip to the back where it says, here are the solutions to the problems. Here's how you get a town that's in the upper uh, echelon of towns in America. Here's how you get a town that makes it. And they start by saying, have a vibrant public library. Have a vibrant public library. Because ultimately, it's a statement of who we all are, who this town is, and what this region is. Thank you so much. OK, with our next group of thank yous to our friends board in Smyrna, who this would not happen if we didn't have such a great board, I'm going to call their names, and then I'll ask everyone just to stand and turn around so they know who you are. We have Pat Musto. Regina Brown, Dana Watte, Joanne Maston, Jane Snyder, we also call her Mom. More people know her as Mom than Jane. Uh, Beverly Ratty, Marion Casella, Darlene Hitchens, uh, Marsha Cawthon, and Sam Vador, who is recuperating from uh, knee replacement, so he couldn't make it today. He told me, he says, oh, Kathy, I'll be there. Well. He thought it was going to be easier than it really was, so we wish him well. But this is our 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 group, and uh, yeah. we. You've also got Nancy Swift and Charlotte. Oh, I'm sorry, I jumped ahead. And Rick Horsey, the, Rick Horsey, Nancy, Charlotte. and Charlotte. Thank you. The next group we want to recognize is those that are serving over in the Washington area uh, for the ARPA funding, and that would be uh, Lauren Gutierrez, Guitar who's uh, representing Senator Carper here today, uh, Kate Royer, who's here representing, representing, representing Senator Coons, and also, um, I'm not sure if she made it or not, Representative Lisa Blunt Rochester. We also have some state elected officials here who's very important uh, for their support of the bond bill request from the state. Um, and that is Maddie Ferguson, who's here representing Bethany Hall Long, uh, Representative Bill Carson, Representative Jeff Spiegelman, Senator Kira Huffner, Representative Bill Bush, and I know Fr Representative Franklin Cook is here, and any other senators or representatives that are involved in the library tax district. I have to say a special <laughs> shout out to Representative uh, Franklin Cook. This isn't his district. He came all the way down here because I bragged about his Route 9 library. If you, <laughs> if you have not been there, you know, that is my, my goal. It is unbelievable. It's not just a library. It's a community center. It is just unbelievable what they have done in that area and what they are doing. And their staff, if you go, Go and talk to anyone. They will tell you everything. It, it's just amazing. But I just have to thank Representative Cook and what his people, what they have done up there. He had to go, but he promised oh. to spend money in town before he left. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, great. Well, you tell him that I talked about him, OK? <laughs> uh, there's someone else that I would like to mention before I go with the levy court. We partnered with Harrington, little old Harrington. It was little old Harrington and little old Smyrna. And Marlena Scott 
where are you Marlena race she is the director and we both went for there she is we both went for to be declared tax districts and library tax district and the money would go directly to the library and I can't say enough with what working with her how it worked out so well and with the help of our uh, wonderful county attorney Craig Eliason where are you Craig um, there you are <laughs> he's already standing he did all the paperwork because you know when you get a good idea then everybody wants to jump on board well after we introduced this to the levy court commissioners all of a sudden they started saying well well we want that well I want that for my district so we said well y'all get on board let's just uh, everybody get one you get a tax district you get a tax district and you get a library tax district <laughs> and we did and I can't say enough about those county commissioners those guys and of course I've already bragged about Joanne but those guys were just unbelievable some I had to have a little more persuasion but that's okay and one of them said after the night that uh, it was voted that it finally passed and they said Kathy what are you gonna do with your Tuesday nights after this and uh, I don't know we'll find something but I also told them that I would be back because we will have to have more sustainability money so they'll they'll get to see us more and more but I want to thank Alan Angel of course Joanne Maston uh, the president of Levy Court Terry Pepper Jeff Hall Jody Sweeney Paul Hertz and Robert Scott and I hope those two are not seated or standing together because I've told them before they're not allowed to do that in public because they misbehave <laughs> but these our levy court was what let us have the tax district the library tax district and pass that and that's what's going to give us the sustainability money our governor and our elected officials got us the building but now it's our job to keep it going and that sustainability money is a must I can't thank you guys enough but you'll see me on Tuesdays <laughs> Folks, we've heard a lot about the people at the federal and state level, as well as levy court. And to all of them, I say a special thank you, because obviously we wouldn't be here without them. But an even bigger uh, thanks goes to the town of Smyrna. And those folks, in current day at least, is uh, Sheldon Hudson, the town manager, um, along with our council, Mayor Robert Johnson, Gerald Brown, Bill Presley, Mike Rasmussen, Tabby Gott, Valerie Forbes and Corrine Upshur. I know not all of them are here today, but those of you that could come, we sincerely appreciate it. But even saying how great the town council is, when I was mayor, I always said I would stack our electric department and our public works group among the best in the state. And I will tell you what we have here today and the condition of the parking lot, the fact we had to have a couple cars towed this morning. Um, and we did. But a huge thanks goes to Jason McNatt, who is the um, director of public works, who couldn't ask for a better employee. Uh, Josh Little, who handles the electric. Jeremy Rothwell, who I can tell you we would not be here without Jeremy Rothwell. He's just been a godsend, and I'm sure we're going to pester him a lot over the next 14 months. But he knows it's coming. Uh, Doug Burns, um, he's just been a wonderful, wonderful person to work with. I couldn't ask for a better teammate. And their staffs, because it doesn't happen just with those groups. But I can tell you, without the Public Works team here today, we wouldn't have this nice setting that we have. But all in all, we wouldn't be here either if it wasn't for Smyrna Town Council, who finally voted to let us have the library here. So I think they all deserve a tremendous round of, of uh, applause. There's a few others that are the unspoken heroes because when I was mayor, I was fortunate I had Dave Hug as my town manager. And I'm not sure if Mr. Hug has made it today, although I know he had planned to be here. But Dave deserves a lot of credit for this because we got the ball rolling um, to get the library built in this area. Also want to thank Betty Lou and Bill Wagner, uh, who I know are here. They're previous owners of the Loving Care Nursery here, which when they decided to sell, I was mayor and I needed that, that land, so we bought the building. Carol Benz for her undying pursuit 
to get us money from the legislature, thanks to Representative Carson, uh, because we're going to have a beautiful clock that will be out in the front of what currently was a post office when I was growing up. Uh, that clock will be installed there. In fact, we have the money on, at hand. Also, Sue Flores, who is doing all of our membership, and I don't believe she was able to make it here today, but she takes care of all the memberships, all the notifications, handles everything for us. So all those folks deserve a tremendous round of applause, even though they're not on our board. The other thing, I would, not, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the town of Clayton, who's been a tremendous support to us. Mayor Nick Smith, uh, council uh, individuals, Ryan Paisley, Skip Caro, Mary Ellen De Benedictus, uh, Sean Flatter, and the one and only town manager, Rob Cody, who's, who's my breakfast buddy most mornings, who I just absolutely love talking to. Very smart guy, you know, I have great respect for him, but he's a tremendous supporter. The town of Kenton, who I will tell you were the first town to give us a donation towards the library. Uh, Mayor Paul Capel, Marietta Dio, DGV, Giovanni Darden, and other council people, as well as the town's end council. Again, we could not have done this, even with state and federal help, if we did not have the help from the Smyrna Town Council and the uh, folks that work for the town of Smyrna. For those of us that live in town and pay our taxes, we should be very proud of the employees we have here, because they are the best of the best. Okay, just in case y'all are wondering what I'll be doing for the next year of my life, it'll be in and out of that trailer back there. But after the ribbon cutting, we will happily turn this over to our operations governing board. And I'd like for those people, I'll call your names and I'd like for you to stand. They will be responsible for the hiring, for the day-to-day -day operations, for, um, there's a third thing. Uh, for policies <laughs> and see I knew we can't do this without her and, and they're right and uh, so I'd like to introduce them at this time one of them is wearing two hats right now I'm reluctantly giving him up from the friends board to move over at that time but not a day sooner and that's Rick Horsey and the following Hal Wallace Rick Horsey, Chris Hudson, Ken Messer, Lincoln Willis, and two at-large members, Lisa Torbert and Nelson Drew. If, Drew, if you would please stand. What's so nice is they agreed to do this ahead of time. And, you know, talk to them in a year, let's see, before they start. Let's hope that, that they stay with us. I'd also like to thank the library directors and the staff from all the other libraries that partnered with us for this event. Our ARPA team of the governor, uh, John Sateka, Seleka, uh, Kyle Pritchard, John Fakowski. They have been unbelievable with working with the ARPA funds. Uh, R.Y. Johnson <laughs> is our our construction. Uh, Mark Johnson is the president, and if you'll please stand. Uh, Bob Blyman is our uh, construction manager, and Dave Helsden, and he's the superintendent. He'll be the one here every day. So uh, I think Dave and I are going to be like this before it's over with. Ken, watch out. <laughs> And I have to have a special thank because Becker Morgan is our architects. And uh, I used to say that there was a special place in a place down below for the architect at the opera house. And uh, I told Craig, I said, I don't want you to join him. <laughs> and I said, but we will, be, we will be watching because a lot of us have had experience. This isn't our first rodeo. But I couldn't say enough about Craig Will Williams. He has just has the patience of Job. He is just unbelievable. And I hope that I say these same words at the ribbon cutting <laughs> because I truly mean it. And at Becker Morgan, we have Bob Ryman, Brad Hastings, Craig Williams, Christine Smith, Kelsey uh, Seagraves, and John Fakowski and Mike Reed. If you guys would stand, please and wave. Oh good, they're all together back there. 
They have done a fabulous job and taken any suggestion and at any time. And, you know, one day at Smyrna Diner, I said to Craig, I said, get that computer out. I said, I know you can pull this up right now and we can make these changes. And that fella did. I mean, he really paid attention. And before we walked out of there, we had a whole different design on the front of the building. But he, he just, I can't say enough about that guy. But anyway, moving right along. You know, you've heard us all thank so many people for so many things that have helped us to get to this point. But there's one thing for sure. When the construction company comes in to actually break the ground to build a, li build a library, they obviously have to have a place to put their construction equipment. And when you look around Smyrna, there's not a whole lot of places where you can put heavy equipment, steel, etc. But thanks to a good Samaritan named Charlie Burton, who's the owner of IG Burton, and I don't know if uh, Charlie's here. Is he here today? Well, we owe uh, the board as well as the rest of us owe uh, Charlie Burton, who's the owner of IG Burton, a tremendous thank you, along with Joe Renzi, who I know is in Florida today, because they're going to allow us to use a lot of their property here in the back to store the construction equipment. Otherwise, it would be a problem to build this library because you can see the number of cars that are over here for the, for the wellness center. It would be, almost be impossible to store the materials here. So with the blessings of them, we're gonna be able to do that. So for Charlie Burton, who's not here, if anybody knows him or sees him, please let him know how much we truly appreciate him as well as Joe, Ren Joe Renzi because it's a partnership between the two of them. But again, thanks so much for all of you coming. Um, we can't wait for a year or 14 months from now to actually uh, cut the ribbon so that we can go in and see a beautiful new library in downtown Smyrna. An $18 million investment that it's hoped will bring people here that's going to help the economic development of the town of Smyrna. With that, I'll turn it back to Kathy. Okay, Rick. Rick Corsi. Where's Rick? Rick? Oh, I'll have you come on up. I'm going to say a couple of closing words and then I'll turn it over to Rick that will give the, the blessing of the site. Would like to remind you to uh, stop at the membership table in the back, even if you just pick one up and then send it in later on. We would love for you all to be members of our Friends of Duck Creek Regional Library. Uh, also, you can stop in at Smyrna Card Shop, which is just around the corner, and of course, Sayers Jewelry Store, which is right across the street. Now, I have to tell you, you gentlemen, you don't know the points that you would get if you stopped in and brought your wives or girlfriends or both. What if, if you would stop in and surprise them? But then on the other hand, for all the ladies, and if you're like, like me, I might stop in and you might stop in and get one and bring it home and say, look what you just got me. <laughs> so don't miss this opportunity. If we've forgotten anyone, we promise that we'll make it up to you at the ribbon cutting in December of 2024. Now, RYJ, did you hear that? We said December of 2024. Okay. <laughs> We're going to let our special guest from Smyrna Elementary take the first shovels and hard hats. And if you'll go up with the governor, they'll be the first ones. Then we'll have our board and our board of governors follow. And then the rest of you, we want you to have the, uh, the photo op as well. So just get in line. And did, we, did the food come? Yeah, too. Oh, good. So help yourself. We don't want to take any of this home. Thank you so much again for everything, guys. Okay. Yes. Oh, Rick, I'm sorry. Here I had you come up and I forgot all about all about you. Thank you, Kathy and uh, Joanne. Uh, will you bow your heads and pray with me, please? Dear Father in heaven, we give you all praise and thanks for the gift of this beautiful day, this beautiful sunny day as we celebrate the groundbreaking of the Duck Creek Regional Library. Father, we thank you for, the bless, for blessing us with the friends of the library and our library consultant Kay, 
who so diligently preserved through many years of planning and never giving up hope. Father, we thank you for our mayor and town council, our Kent County Levy Court Commissioners and Newcastle County Commissioners, our governor and legislators who have generously supported the dream of a new library. Father, we ask that you bless the engineers and workers who designed and will construct this beautiful library with, their safe, with safety, with their skills and wisdom to turn this dream into a reality. Father, we ask that you bless the library staff with everything they need to serve the wonderful people who visit the library and bless this governing board who will oversee its operations. Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit descend upon and bless all children, youth, and adults who gather here for work or study so they may grow in the knowledge and wisdom of divine and human affairs. May this library be a blessing to all people who live and work in our communities. And we pray it all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen.